you take the gyroscopic root of Fibonacci multiplied by the sine of pi relative to the terminal velocity of the hydraulic pressure experienced at the knee joint, according to my calculations, you'll get... Look guys, we gotta talk. Unfortunately, this is a lot of the fluff you're gonna hear in certain parts of the fitness sphere, depending on what part of the internet you stumble into. And it seems the more esoteric the language, the better. Now, having been someone who has fell down this rabbit hole and then climbed themselves back out of it, I wanted to provide my two cents on biomechanics training, as well as provide easy to follow actual techniques that you can implement into just about any training program without any of the esoteric fluff. But first, let's define what biomechanics training even really is. Broadly speaking, biomechanics training is a practice that focuses on the mechanics of how the body moves. It typically involves analyzing and improving movement to prevent injury, improve performance, and improve overall physical function. This broadly defines the what, but when you start to get into the how, that's where things can start to get a little hairy depending on what corner of the internet you happen to fall into. Here's my take. Your training as a whole should comprise of three different categories, all of which are related, but will have different points of focus depending on what your individual experience and goals may be. Now let's get into the first one, function. Function refers to the ability for your body to work through specific tasks or movements. Really what this means is the quality of your movements is going to determine the longevity or quantity of your movements over time. How you can approach this is the more closely you optimize for the stimulus that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis or the stimulus that you may find yourself dealing with in sports, ultimately the more durability you're gonna be creating in your body. Now the second one is oddly controversial, strength. When it comes to strength, it comes in all different shapes and sizes. Some people wanna lift heavy weights, some people wanna run marathons, other people just wanna jump high. But at the end of the day, it all refers to the same definition, which is a muscle or set of muscles to exert force against resistance. Now resistance can look a lot of different ways. And as a byproduct of that, strength can look a lot of different ways. You can train for absolute strength as an example, which is your ability to lift really as much weight as possible. Or on the other side, there's relative strength, which is the maximum amount of force that you can generate relative to your body weight. This in part is what makes elite athletes so elite. Usain Bolt, as an example, has a really high level of relative strength, hence why he can run so fast. So something worth keeping in mind is strength in general is an umbrella term for a lot of subcategories that exist underneath it. And that's why there's no one way to getting stronger because it really depends on the strength that you personally wish to develop. The third and last one is freedom of movement. Call it flexibility, mobility. Yes, there's some similarities and differences, but broadly speaking, freedom of movement is your ability to move and perform without limitation or restriction. This encompasses both your ability to go through broad ranges of motion, but also have strength, stability, and coordination as you do so. This also touches on aspects of rhythm and flow where you're allowing the body to move dynamically without much restriction and tension in your body. Now these categories are what I have found work for me. These are by no means the end all be all, but I find for me and in my experience, they have provided a good shape of what a training program should entail and what it should roughly look like. When this is combined with some awareness into your body and the biomechanics of movement, you get a little bit closer to the positive impacts that biomechanics training can have. And what's great, if you noticed, I described all of that without any fancy or esoteric language. It really makes you think. So at this point in the video, we've broken down what biomechanics training is, why it's important, and some brief theory behind how it may look in practice. What we are going to get into next is some biomechanics training examples that I think just about anyone can benefit from that you can implement into just about any training program. So let's get into that. So for the first gyroscopic, I mean, my bad, sorry, biomechanics training exercise that we're gonna get into, we're gonna be working on some breathing. So you're gonna come up against a wall. I'm gonna put in some nice B-roll for you as to what that is gonna look like. And I think everyone can benefit from learning just some basic principles to learning how to breathe. Now on average, people take upwards of 26,000 breaths per day. So where you breathe is gonna have a large influence on what muscles, what parts of your nervous system may be coming online. So it's something that you can have easy access to to actually change your state, as well as change what muscles kind of feel like as you go through motion. So 
simply what we are gonna work on today is this idea of breathing into different areas of our body, as well as playing with the cadence of that breath. So once you're all settled in, you're on your back, you maybe have your hands on your side, kind of as you see me here. What you're gonna to start to do is notice, first and foremost, where it is that you are currently breathing. All we're gonna to do to start with is go through five to six breaths and just get this baseline understanding of where it is that we breathe to begin with. Now, once you've gone through your five or six breaths and you've tuned in a little bit, what we're gonna to start to play with is sending pressure first into our abdominal wall, which is kind of this imaginary cylinder, kind of right above your hips. And then we're gonna follow that breath through into the rib cage. Now we're gonna go through this in a pretty specific way. So as you can see, I have my hands on the side of my abdominal wall. And what I want you to start to feel into in this position is sending two thirds of your breath into your hands with the remaining one third coming up into your rib cage. We are gonna work this with a one to one ratio. So we're gonna take a five second inhale and then a five second exhale. And all I want you to try to sense and kind of get a feel for as you're going through this, is kind of like this subtle wave in your body. We're kind of gradually building pressure from the base, kind of from the hips. We're gonna slowly draw up, feel a gentle amount of expansion come into the ribs. And then we're just gonna let all that pressure go we're gonna to try to let the pressure kind of fall from the rib cage back down into the abdominal wall. So really it's just this interplay of kind of filling from the abdominal wall up to the ribs and then letting go from the rib cage back down to the pelvis. Welcome to the second exercise that we're gonna be working through, which is gonna be a split stance hybrid hinge, is what I call it. So grab yourself a little wood block, you can grab yourself just a little step stool, anything that's gonna allow you to get into a split stance position where you have most of your weight on your lead leg. So what we're gonna be working on here is some single leg stability. We're gonna work on bringing some strength into the pelvis, some connection between the hips, knee, and ankle, as these are gonna be pretty foundational muscle groups that we're gonna to wanna to work on integrating and linking together, because anytime that we go through a hinge, a lunge, a step, a reach, these muscles will be at play in some way. So getting all set up into your split stance position like so, what you're gonna to start to do is gradually start to shift your hips back. And what I want you to think is you're trying to create some level of separation between where your knee and your hip are in space. What this is going to allow for is things like the hamstrings and glutes to start to get a lot of length. What I try to kind of sense or feel into as I'm going through this is that lengthening process, but even more important, like I'm kind of winding up an imaginary slingshot. So as these tissues are lengthening, I'm thinking about the muscle, the connective tissue, I'm kind of feeling into that. And then I'm gonna to try to sustain or maintain some of that as I start to come up and move into hip extension. This is an exercise I think everyone can benefit from in some way, as it touches on a lot of different functions between the ankle, the knee, and the hip, and the interplay of these muscles as we go through a very common motion. You can use this as a warm up, pre fatigue, or just as a way to draw sensation into your body as to what muscles you want to have come online when you start to increase the load. One last higher level concept as it relates to this motion is that if you can't do it slow with good quality connection throughout, then chances are if you start adding a lot of load or you start going through it more quickly, then the connection just won't be there. So give yourself some time to try to sense and really feel into this motion. So as you've come to learn throughout the course of this video, Biomechanics training isn't this fancy independent entity of other training systems. Rather, it's just a component of it. When you remove all the fluff and distill it down to its most simple components, really all biomechanics training is and what it's doing is improving movement quality. Whether you're a bodybuilder, power lifter, javelin thrower, maximum sprinter, biomechanics are at play. And it's a powerful tool that when used properly can improve just about anyone's training program. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you. You're a real one and I appreciate it. And if you're into this type of biomechanics training, we cover a wide array of different content around that on this channel. So if you wanna watch another video that I did on something related to the body with a little biomechanics twist on it, I try to keep it simple. You can watch a, another video I did right here.